Here's an example of a separations preview panel in action. On the far left, you can see that I've launched a separations preview panel and changed the view mode to separations, which allows me to see how the image would be printed, which in essence makes all the inks transparent because printing inks are transparent by default. It also shows me all the colors my project is made up of. It starts with cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. It will always have that if you set up your InDesign document with the intent for printing. Whether you're using those channels of color or not, they will always be present on your separations preview panel. In addition, and if you look at the sneaker itself, you can see I'm using pink, blue, yellow, green, purple, yellow, orange, red, purple, and green. And on here, um, if I was to turn off the eyeballs except for, let's say, the blue one, it would only show me the blue color in the separations preview. So if we move over to the second example, I've done just that, but instead of turning on the blue eye, I have turned on the yellow-orange eye. If we go back and look at the first example, you can see that I've used the orange-yellow color or the yellow-orange color on the tongue of the shoe. And so only where the tongue of the shoe is present can I see that color. Now because only one channel of color is turned on, I'm not seeing orange, I'm seeing black because it represents the density of the ink being applied. In this case, I've used 100% cyan, 100% pink, 100% yellow-orange. Everywhere that I've used a color, I've used 100% density of that color. And so in all of my examples, you just see the color black because I'm using 100% density. For the third example, we see purple. Purple is the outline of the shoe, and so you're seeing a black outline everywhere the shoe is not because it's printing with black, but because it's printing with 100% of purple, since that's the only channel that's turned on. And in our last example here, I've done the same thing with green. Green makes up the sole of the shoe, and so you're only seeing the little outline of the bottom sole of the shoe. Once a designer has identified where colors are printing in a design, he or she can make additional decisions about the colors and how they interact with one another by setting them to be a knockout or an overprint. However, must, one must first understand what it means to be a knockout or an overprint. A knockout occurs when opposing printed elements within a design do not print directly over the top of one another. They'll print side by side. They can touch, but one would not be tucked under or over another. An overprint occurs when elements within a design print directly one right over the top of another. An example of how knockouts are used in printing occurs in this example on this slide. I have two examples, one is an overprint and one is a knockout. My ultimate goal is to print a photograph in maybe a Sunday circular that's going to be delivered in the, the newspaper. And I want to print the word sale and an exclamation point in the bottom right hand corner. And I want it to be bright yellow. On the left, I'm printing yellow right over the top of the photograph. And so when I look at the photograph, it's hard to read because when I print yellow over the top of any other color and the inks are transparent, it will blend with whatever is below it. With a knockout, I left a big white hole in the shape of the word sale because I didn't want to print yellow over the top of any other color. I wanted yellow to hit white paper. And if I leave the shape of sale open so there's no uh, ink under it, whenever the yellow hits the paper or the white paper, it can be bright yellow because it's yellow ink hitting white paper. Instead of yellow ink hitting cyan, magenta, and yellow, or sorry, cyan, magenta, and black printed below the yellow. Here's an example of what a printing plate might look like or a color separation might look like for that color. On the overprint, can you see that when I print the colors, and to be honest, I don't remember which is which, but it's cyan, magenta, well, this one's yellow, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. So when I apply cyan I'm printing in these areas so down here there's some amount of cyan being applied I'm printing magenta here and so there's some amount of magenta being applied under where sale is going to be there's really not much black but that just happens to be because the image doesn't have black in that area and when I print the yellow plate I am printing hundred percent yellow in the word sale but because the word sale is going to be printed over the top of some amount of cyan and some amount of magenta it comes out looking muddy because it's blending with the colors that were printed behind it. But on a knockout, notice how when I print the cyan printing plate, I leave a hole everywhere that I want to print yellow so that when I print yellow over top of this, the yellow goes through that hole and hits unprinted white paper, allowing it to remain bright yellow. The same applies for the word sale on the next plate, so we'll call this the magenta plate. I leave a hole everywhere I'm going to print yellow 
so that when I do print yellow, it can still hit fresh unprinted paper. And then when I print yellow, I print all the yellow needed for the background, but 100% yellow in the word, in the shape of the word sale. And then it's kind of hard to see, but there is a knockout. You can kind of see it with the exclamation point. Anywhere there may have been even 2% density of black being applied, I leave a hole where the word sale is going to be, and so it will definitely hit unprinted paper when we print yellow.